How crucial is the European Green Deal right now? It is, in my view, the best we have in the world of a transformation agenda that really looks at transformation in depth, in scope, in holism, and in time dimension. It's really well done. Uh, as I like to say, it's totally bureaucratic, but in the Weberian rational bureaucratic mold. Uh, in other words, uh, it's really thinking through systematic processes to make change uh, in uh, the, the best of the bureaucratic sense. Who has responsibility? Who needs to do what? What are the timelines? What are the processes? But it's not a plan. It's a process right now. The European Green Deal is not a plan. I want us to help fill in the plans uh, at the country level, at the regional level, uh, what really to do, because what the European Green Deal is, is a set of timelines, milestones, in an absolutely desirable, holistic approach, but it doesn't have underneath it the what to do in detail. And Europe still too much uh, then leaves the what to do at the country level uh, rather than really regional investment strategies. Uh, though that's getting better, it's still not enough in my view. We need regional energy system. Uh, we need uh, regional food uh, uh, production, distribution, use, uh, management system. We definitely need regional systems for the ecology of the region, for the health of uh, the Mediterranean Sea and so forth. So I think the European Green Deal is a huge plus and it is already having its global diplomatic effect. Definitely Europe brought uh, the East Asian countries into the recent announcements of China net climate neutrality by 2060, Japan under new Prime Minister Suga announcing very quickly uh, upon his uh, new prime ministership uh, ne uh, climate neutrality by 2050, uh, Korea the same. So we really have a lot of partners. And uh, once we pry Trump's fingers from his Oval Office desk and carry that man out of uh, his office, uh, we're going to have a good president in the United States. and. There will be a U.S. Green Deal in effect uh, to join this. So I think we're going to have a lot of opportunity diplomatically for the European Green Deal to be applied first in the European uh, countries, the 27. I hope we can find ways to extend this to North Africa and the Eastern Mediterranean because it's a framework, uh, not only a European policy, but a, a very well-designed framework and then as part of global diplomacy. And I'll uh, just end at that point to say that 2021 is potentially shaping up uh, as a breakthrough year. Uh, I don't think that's just a cliche. I think it's uh, actually real. Uh, this has been a very, very tough year uh, with COVID, with Trump, with uh, just a extraordinarily uh, difficult year. 2021 should be much better. Our governments by then first should figure out how to contain this pandemic. They've not quite done so, uh, unfortunately. That's why the second wave is so terrible. But the knowledge of what to do is much better. There will be vaccines coming, which will help probably in mass use by the second half of 2021 uh, and partial use before then, that will help. There will be President Biden. That will help a lot because the madness from the United States was the greatest distraction to global policy making in the world in recent years. It just stopped logical thinking in the G20 and in so many other processes. That will improve dramatically. And colleagues, we have at least three major global uh, events next year that we should be uh, present at in a very active way. 
Uh, the first is COP15 of the Convention on Biological Diversity in Kunming, China in May, which should set ground rules for biodiversity conservation for years ahead. The second is the World Food System Summit uh, called by the UN and the Secretary General uh, in the fall. Very important opportunity for us. And uh, if uh, the uh, SDSN Europe and uh, SDSN Mediterranean works closely with FAO, uh, WFP, the Rome-based institutions, I think we can and all of the initiatives that we have with Gorilla and the food industry uh, and Regeneration 2030 you know, with uh, Andrea Illy, we really can contribute to the World Food Summit in an important way. And then, of course, we have COP26 in Glasgow in November, which needs to be the time in which every country has committed to decarbonization by mid-century so that there finally is the global understanding and orientation of how to get to net zero in a timely way. This is all going to be on the agenda. I think we have a big leadership role to play because of your leadership uh, and uh, because of uh, Europe's uh, unique leadership role in, in the global agenda. And uh, this I find very promising. So let me uh, conclude where I started with great thanks for a wonderful report and a wonderful initiative. Uh, thanks to Angelo for your leadership on all of this. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous contribution and uh, a very exciting one. Thank you.